Well, good morning, everybody. Today is day three of the Wilderness Living Challenge, season number six. We are at the off-grid cabin. It's a new twist on things. We're doing some modern day homesteading. So we're using a bunch of different tools and gadgets, but we're doing it all off-grid. So I'm gonna take you up here I'm gonna take you to the power center. This is kind of the heart of everything that we're doing here. Because we're living off grid, we have to use battery bank system. So we've got all our batteries set up here. We've got a generator. I'll show you this in the light if you haven't seen it yet. And then we have a freezer over here, which we were hoping to make more use of, but so far we have managed to get pretty meager supplies. So I'm just gonna switch on the battery bank here. We're gonna test up a new one today, but that's gonna fire up our lights. Got, uh, had a new one sent out to me. We're gonna try that out for some battery charging. But right now, what we need to do is get ready because we're going on a goose hunt. We've already done deer hunts, raccoon hunts, squirrel hunts, and even some fishing concentration this morning is to meet up with Mark he's gonna take us out to a cut field and we're gonna get busy hopefully dropping down some geese we've got a propane tank sitting over here we are turn it off at night and that will run our stove so just down here propane tank we open that up and we turn that off at night so we don't explode the whole damn place and fire up the camper it's an old rv camper stove how's that fire that's out oh totally out so we got to get that rocking again because we have some leftover raccoon that needs heating and i also have some breakfast i left outside chilling which is squirrel and some wild rice so we're gonna get uh that's my underwear I thought it was my hat. So I gotta get camel on. <laughs> <laughs> put it on. Well, there is an ash pan on the side. How do you get the ashes out? Is there a thing underneath you there? I don't know. I'm not sure. Ask Kevin later. But I think you have to open the front door. I'm missing, I'm missing a light here. There we go. I know you can see the tune. Taking the ash out of the hole. Uh, I think it'll burn a lot better now that it's going to be sitting down where it's supposed to be sitting down instead of raised up. I think we forgot to clean this out when we put it back in. Yeah. Um, after the winter. We just threw it back in and then we thought, well, we're going to get the shop back out here and suck it out. Oh. And it never happened. The shop back? Well, we were going to scoop it and then shop back it. Never okay. happened. Anyway, needs a good cleaning. A bad project to start. Probably a few minutes before we have to go. Our latch here is all seized up. There's a latch down below here, and it won't let us open this thing up. Oh, look at what? Oh, what? It what? I guess they smashed it enough times. I thought it. I thought it turned. There we go. Now we can open it and we can clean this out and make it work properly. Because there's a, a pan here that's full of junk, and then it's not letting the oxygen come in the back, so it's always puffing smoke in there. So there you go, Jer. Awesome. One problem solved. We gotta get out of here. We gotta get our decoy set up before the geese start landing in the field. Otherwise, they're gonna figure us out. And then we won't be able to catch them and cook them. I wanna put a goose in here, right in, in this little spot there. And then from that spot in this spot, and then in this spot down here. Oh, camouflage some, jacket. Some ASAT camo for you. Thanks. Considering you're gonna be the black beast. Yeah. It's not going to work for geese. I'm just disguised as the Angus cattle. <laughs> yeah. You're going to lay down in the field or just gonna pretend go on my you're all, eating? All fours and just say moo. <laughs> well, that ASAT will work for you. Discount yeah. code down below if you guys want to buy some ASAT camel. It takes like 10% or 50% off. Good stuff, right? You can barely see me in here. I didn't, I was wondering who was talking. <laughs> well, I'm kind of blocked out here, but 
it does really work well. I try to take like a thumbnail picture wearing the ASAC camel yeah. and I look at it after I'm like, I can't even see myself at the, like it doesn't pop out. Oh yeah. You just totally blend in. I might have to take a layer off. That's a little tight. It's a little bit small for me, but well, it's, it's also, you've got like three layers underneath it. Yeah. <laughs> it is a winter jacket by itself. So it might be, yeah, yeah. it might be warm enough. All right. Look, well, we we match, organize we match now. Barely tell the difference between the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly a meal to go. I probably take it to go. Should I take it to go? Yeah. People eat all sorts of things to do something. Like be, Mark might be particular about what you eat in this truck. Yeah, maybe. He's got a nice truck. Yeah. Do you have, do you have a nice truck like that? Me? Hmm. Nope. I have not a truck. I have a car. I need a chuck sponsor. Well, Jeremy's fooling around with the stove. This is the one we're gonna test out today. It's called the Jackery. So it's got a uh, solar panel that we can hook up to it and we can, we're gonna try to power the cabin off of this and then charge a bunch of things. It's got USB chargers. Uh, it's got a cigarette lighter, a bunch of other inputs. And it's already pre-charged to have it at um, 100% and we're gonna draw it down and see if we can run the, basically run the cabin stuff off of this one. So again, that's the Jackery. I'll give you. A, I'll leave you. Just. I can't talk yet. It's still early. I'll leave a link in the description. You guys can check that out. My flashlights are all ready for a charge in my phone too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're running everything off grid, so everything's charging down on the third day. So GoPro batteries, uh, cells, cell phones, and then the charge. There's all the lights in here. Dude, I didn't get bring something to sit on. I can get two pails back there and grab a third. Yeah, I have my camera yep. case. I can so run down and get my camera case in the seat. It won't take me like two seconds. Don't worry about it. I'd mm -hmm. sit on a pail anyways, because you're gonna have wet grass all around you and it's gets okay. soaked. No biggie. All right. The lights on or yeah, off? Yeah, it's nice for a second. Morning. Morning. <laughs> Very early morning. <laughs> Well, it's typical for us. We're in like full collection mode, so we're up early every day. Yeah. We're and late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we didn't sleep too much last night. No. No. Well, Six by the time hours. you did, you clean birds last night? No. Nope. No. I'm just gonna let them hang for a bit. Yeah. Throw them in the deep freeze, freezing hole. Well, probably just let them hang for a day. We're looking good. We're looking good. We're actually two minutes early, <laughs> and so we're gonna go hit a cornfield. Hopefully the wind dies down when the yeah. sun starts to rise. It should. Uh, it's been windy all night. Yeah. I, and I know it because I was sleeping outside. It, it, did you sleep outside? <laughs> yeah. Get sprinkled on a little bit. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, so yesterday, after I saw you in the morning and there was nothing there, I crossed back past the same field yeah. and there was probably 200-ish birds. What? <laughs> 200? So even if at sunrise you don't see them, it's going to be a kind of a crappy day. Yeah. Just, just ride it tight. out and sit. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we can sit as long as we want or? Yeah, yeah, until you're tired. freezing cold or yeah. Well, I know Jared, we'll whatever. stay there till we get filled with lemon. Yeah. If we can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just stay there. All right. Uh, I didn't get a chance to eat all my breakfast, so here we are. We got all the decoys all set up in the dark here. They're all brushed in. We're just on the edge. There's a just a road right here, but Mark was saying there's 200 birds that landed in here. I was just sitting on a pail and. Right up against the tree here. Jamie's gonna be on the other side. The wind's coming from this direction, so the birds are gonna come in this way. We're just gonna swing you guys around once we get set. We're hoping the birds fly. It's pretty windy. But lots of corn in the field sitting around. So if they're hungry and motivated, they're gonna find us. And we're gonna find them. Like a pop up line.
sunrise. <laughs> should, should be geese soon. Where are they? <laughs> we were set up at 4.30 and we saw, we saw, we saw, we saw. 4.30 like, p.m.? Yeah. And then it was like 20 minutes to dark. We're like, well, I guess nothing's happening. And then... <laughs> And they just started pouring into the... Yeah. And it was still shooting light, but it was like... You couldn't really see them coming, but you could hear them. And yeah. got a little bit fast and furious there for like 10 minutes. Just sight shot. Sight or over. sound shoot them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here comes a <the> missile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poof. Put on the blindfold and the... <laughs> Jedi senses. Yeah. <laughs> Jedi duck hunting. Shoot by ear. Yep. And feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I feel hungry. I feel like there's a duck there. <laughs> got him now. Whatever you got. <laughs> They're pretty close. Oh, there was our chance. We had uh, nine shots at one goose, and it got hit, but it just didn't go down. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you could have easily just, you know, hit wing or whatever. Well, we the hit, tips of wing we hit stuff, them. They got hit. Yeah, <laughs> it just Too didn't bad. go down. Yeah, I hit two, but I don't know if Chris hit them. <laughs> so we're gonna add the duck decoys in here. Mark's a better shooter than Jeremy and me. You're not hearing that. So maybe we'll get some on the ground. It's still windy, but uh, at least they're up in the air now. So get all these set up and we'll get hunkered back down and we have some better luck. Landed over in the corn. Okay. They landed. Yeah. That's a hungry, hungry man. He's a military crawl in it. He's only doing that because it's my jacket. <laughs> Your jacket is not mud. Yeah. He's got to realize how far he's got to go still. He's gonna put the beat down oh, halfway up to his knees. No, he doesn't have his gun up though. I think he's realizing how far they are now, down the hill. He's just sitting there with the gun on his lap. He's out there doing a belly crawl because a bunch of geese landed over on the other side. We'll see if he uh, can manage to sneak up on them. There's at least three dropped down and then the other three knocked in a bunch of other ones. So, Oh, there's... Uh, oh, up, up, up. There they're up here. There's four up. Of the tree. Hit him with the 
can because I can't. Okay, hit him. I got that one. Yeah, I got the first one there, but you got the second Woo! one. Woo! Okay, there's, that guy's got his head up. You Which guy? Him. Hold on. My guy, your, oh, your guy. Yeah, my guy's got his head up. Okay. Get him? I got him. He gone. Oh, we all got a bird now. <laughs> nice. One, one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, four shots of a bird. Yeah. <laughs> got him on my first shot, I think, and then I tried to hit something through the branches here, but I missed. Unless I hit one and it fell not. There, I don't know. No, I only saw the one bird fall. Oh, birds, 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 birds. You're bushed right in now. I'm invisible. Pretty much. Invisible or visible? Invisible. <laughs> Unvisible. I'm non-visible. Non-visible? Non all that ASAP I'm camo. visible And grass. Jeremy's way though, chasing him down is like slower. I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go faster. Yeah, yeah. Those are far out. They yeah. didn't. We didn't shoot them that far, did we? So Fairly far, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Seems far now. Way further than in. we normally would, but they're flaring once they get real close, right? Yeah. Not bad at all. Not bad for the, the group of guys we're running today. Not bad for the group of guys <laughs> and the wind. The wind is brutal. Yeah. <laughs> our best fall yet. That was nice. I like that one. Oh, we did all right. We got eight in total. We could have done better than that, but uh, you know, <laughs> we're all amateurs except for Mark. Mark's an expert. Jeremy is semi-pro. Uh, I'm no <laughs> expert. No, I'm just joking. That's for sure. We're all kind of learning. We're gonna get back and uh, eat some raccoon and pluck some geese. It's gonna be probably the rest of the afternoon and probably head out for a deer hunt. So I'm gonna try to get a deer on the ground. That'll be the big goal for the season. All I've done is it's a, a male, double male plug. So we've plugged into the cabin down below here. Um, so this is drawing, this is powering the lights right now. So we're gonna run this during the day. Like I said, I'm gonna figure out how it does. I gotta get the uh, coon going because that those geese are not gonna be ready to go anytime soon. Um, so let's get this fired up here. There we go. We'll throw our raccoon on there and I'm probably gonna dump a bunch of rice once it heats up and we'll let that get ready. It's already cooked, as you know, from yesterday. Now we just gotta get it so it's kind of tenderized and warm. We want a warm afternoon. And Jeremy's gonna be out really busy we gotta upgrade the meat pole and uh, we'll get all our wild animals hung we got now eight, is it eight that we got jeremy yeah eight geese uh a squirrel something else three pigeons three pigeons right i forgot about the pigeons and two rainbow trout what are you eating that's not wild food <laughs> <laughs> that's it you're out of the child you're out mark's out first mere first man down you're not even halfway in you gonna eat some coon? He's now he's sheepishly hiding the evidence. Oh, Mark's not part of the competition. He's just, uh, he's the guide. The guide service. 
So he technically shot a couple geese, so you can take a, geese, a couple geese home as long as Jeremy doesn't want to let you have some or let you have some, but he doesn't. My geese are all a gift to Jeremy for eating at home outside of the challenge. Yep, and Jeremy's gonna be <laughs> taking probably most of this home. I think we're gonna eat maybe two, maybe two during this challenge. So any of the surplus is obviously going home with him. There's no way we can eat eight geese or would want to, or would want to try. So, I mean, there's a lot of abundance when it comes to the wild foods, but you're gonna get a whole bunch of things all at the same time. We thought about doing like a, a, go, a goose with a pigeon in it. So that would be a, a goujin. And then if we got one of those sparrows, it would be a go, goujin, goujinero. But I don't think we're gonna get a sparrow. We might put a pigeon in though. If not, we'll stuff it with apples. Uh, some bear fat and some rice and that'll be perfect goose and we'll throw it in the oven It's pretty nice to have this cabin To change in and get warmed up in once we get this fire blazing perfect just take the chill off and And just use less energy when you don't have to be cold all the time So have some place comfortable to set up have all our gear here past seasons we've been working out of tents working out of vehicles just traveling all over the place this is this is real homesteading fire gas stove to cook on that is gonna be looking good we just want to get that rice finished up now and it's been sitting there cooking over well not cooking overnight but just kind of resting overnight now it's all fall off the bone and my mouth is watering so give us about another Probably about an hour and that wild rice will be cooked. It takes longer to cook than standard rice. But it has just as much energy and it's going to fill and it's going to hold on to those fat molecules from the raccoon and just going to make a hearty meal. So the reality of things is we still got a ton of work to do. We haven't even processed the goose yet. Uh, it's a little bit past lunch. Pigeons are still hanging. Jeremy's working on a squirrel right now which he shot a couple days ago from this tree stand. So that one will be ready. Probably Jeremy will take that one home, I'm guessing. Yeah, you gonna take it home? Yeah, might as well freeze it, eh? Yeah, freeze it, take it home. Because we have quite a bit of stuff to eat now. Yeah, we got lots. We got lots of stuff to choose from. So I'm gonna dodge back inside here because it's chilly outside. Make sure our fire's going. I'm gonna keep that topped up because we're gonna make it roasty, roasty hot in here. And then uh, check the status of our, Ooh, that's a little high, but that's all right. We'll turn it down. Let's get that cranked down a little bit more. There we go. Just get that element just right. So this Jackery battery power, it's basically meant for car camping. So if you want to go camping, you still want power, charge your phone and stuff like that. That's, that's the pack for you. Just charge it before you go. And then when you're out in the field, it actually has a giant solar panel too. And oh, this is just a wire you connect to it and you plug it in and it'll trickle charge. Uh, not the right weather for me to test it today. Uh, it's, it's raining, it's miserable. Um, there's not even any spot where I can get any direct sunlight, but this might be a good product for you. And then there's some uh, USB powers um, out here, LED light and all that good stuff. And at the back, there's a little stand so you can rig it just how you want it facing the sun. So it's a pretty neat system. So that's where you would uh, input your power. And get that directed into the battery for your trickle charge. So you have some options there. Um, you know, if you do an extended trip, obviously you could use a solar panel, but you can run off this directly and you'd have enough to power your phones and some lights for a couple nights. Heavy and hot. You ready for this? I am so ready for this. One, two. Ah, look at that steam. Look at that food. Dig in. This could be a bone bowl. Bone bowl, that's a good idea. That's an upgrade for the cabin. A bone bowl. Yep. So obviously this meal is um, sponsored by us and Jackery. <laughs> <laughs> Who is serving us our lights right now. So don't wait to dig in. We're right gonna make a better ice here and then put a bunch of raccoon meat on there. So if you don't know how the raccoon entered our lives, you'll have to check uh, the series. We are going, what, six days? 
Yep. And we're on day three. Yep. So we're settling into the groove at the start. It looked like we were not going to be doing that well. It's a little bit nerve wracking when we didn't fill all our traps for the raccoon, but we've managed to adapt. Yeah. Uh, improvise and overcome. Yeah. <laughs> we replaced raccoons with geese. Yeah. So we did manage to get this one raccoon in the trap. So that's a little bit of a spoiler, but it's not, you know, it's not about just trapping things. Um, it's more about modern homesteading at this point. We're trying to make a go of living off grid and collecting wild things that we find around us. The uh, wild rice is a bit of a um, import, but it is local to Canada, put it that way. It's hard to find this stuff. It's actually hard to harvest this stuff legally anymore because it's all protected. There are still some places where there's an abundance of it. Um, do you hear the cycle on? That's just the fan blowing because it's hot in here now with the fireplace. So it's basically, um, it's going to turn on every once in a while just to cool that motor down or the battery down, I should say. There's no motor in there. Uh, yeah, we had a piece of the uh, raccoon before. We know it's good. Yep. So right now we're just fighting over choice parts. The choice parts, lots of fat on it. Um, and then I'm gonna use my cheat, it's my cheat, it's not really a cheat, it's my wadobo spice, we're gonna add that. Jeremy's not cheating and using any spices at all. And then we're gonna of course add maple syrup, which came from this property, but harvested in the spring. This spring, actually, this is this spring's 2019. We're gonna add a bunch of it. Here you go, Jeremy. And our goal at the start was to eat one of these jars every day. And <laughs> we're on day three and we almost filled one jar. <laughs> it doesn't look like we're even gonna get it on the day three. Almost empty one jar. But we've been eating really well because if you're homesteading and you're not burning calories, collecting firewood, burning and cooking outside and sleeping outdoors, although I am, um, you're not burning as many calories. And we come back here, we can warm up, we can dry off. So we're doing pretty good. How's the raccoon? It's more tender than when you eat turkey and chicken usually. Way more tender. And moist. Yeah. Um, the that's the apples and the fat in there, right? Yeah, it's been cooking last night overnight. Um, not quite cooking overnight, we kind of let it sit. Yeah, in the hot pot. Mm -hmm. It's super tender. Yeah. That was good. It's really good. Plucking geese. Oh shoot, I forgot about the geese. We gotta get at least one goose prepared so that we can uh, cook it overnight. We'll probably eat the rest of this today. Probably eat those fish tonight. Oh, the fish, I forgot about the fish. We're too far yeah. ahead of ourselves. We, we are. have too much meat. We're just about right though, I think. We're always like one or two, no, we're one meal ahead so far every time. Now we're two meals ahead. So we're kind of, I mean, if you count all the geese, we're several meals ahead. Yeah. Um, but we're looking really good. So yeah, <clears throat> we probably eat the fish. We, this is leftovers plus the fish. And we're gonna get a deer tonight. Okay. How about that? Sure. I think it's possible. That's that's it's possible. That Every would time be, we go out, it could happen, right? It, exactly. And that would be pretty sweet if we could put it together. How long did that take? Forty minutes. It's been so far. Yeah, we got some in the beard. Do I? <laughs> a little bit. I feel like it's in my eyelashes and in my nose and everything. It's everywhere. Yeah. No, also all down here too. <laughs> yeah. Pretty slow stuff. This one was a better bird to pluck than the one you started on. Because it already had all of its feathers grown in. Or is there like half? Take it to the axe. Yeah, done? Yeah. Yeah, just gotta get the guts out of it and then maybe do a little bit of a final pick over and it's ready to cook. Right on. It's dinner tomorrow. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. We'll do the fish tonight. Yeah. Have I got any feathers in my beard? Some feathers and some gray hair. Just a little bit, right there. Now that, you're 30? now that I'm 30. I just turned 30, just got my first gray hairs in there. So what's the procedure? Kind of like what I did with the squirrel. I just cut like along the tailbone there. Yep. And then I'm gonna cut One side. 
on the other side so the cloaca is free. Fat, eh? Yeah. Well, better grab me a little clean bowl or something. Because so I'm going to want to grab that before it hits the ground. All right, so Jeremy's just going to get the guts out here and we're going to get it in the prepped in the pot maybe. I don't know if we get it in the pot we have time or not. But uh, I'm going to get my stuff on and ready to go for hunting. I'm going to go to a new property, as they've mentioned, and hopefully have a better chance at deer. It's the perfect weather for deer. Not for people, but for deer. It is cold. It's warm in here, though. <laughs> you got so many feathers in your beard. Yeah. It doesn't fit. I have to cut them in half. A little stuffer in there. It'll fit. Just needs a little folding. Yeah. It'll, it'll fold right in there. You can cut the tail off too, maybe. I would just jam it. A little bit of elbow grease in, elbow grease in there. there yeah. You go. How's that look? Close enough. Well, that's pretty close. As long as get the lid on there. You can step on it. Yeah, with that <laughs> dirty goat barn boot. Yeah. All Good right. enough? I think so. All right, we'll keep... We'll wash at the creek. Okay, we'll keep this guy here. I'm just gonna whip this lid on there for now. It'll keep it mostly safe and cool. Uh, all right, now I gotta get dressed and ready for hunting. So the beautiful thing about video is that two minutes ago, I was talking about getting ready. No, it was about 15 minutes ago. We've got everything set. The cabin's all ready to go. Goose is in the pot. So Jeremy's gonna head out to another spot over at the other side of the property. I've got 500 acres to play with. Uh, show me what you're using. Cause I'm using a compound bow. You guys see me use that already. And I think we showed this probably uh, two videos ago in the series. It's got a Excalibur Grizzly. Yeah, an old Excalibur crossbow, but all, if you're gonna get any kind of crossbow, get an Excalibur crossbow. I don't think it's old. Well, it's older. It's not like the newest, newest one. No, well, they make new ones every six every months or something, right? Every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I borrowed this one from Adam Craig Outdoors. Kindly lent it to me. Hope to, uh, shot a deer with a borrowed crossbow last year, and I'm hoping <laughs> to do it again this year. And we haven't seen a deer yet. I haven't seen one yet, no. But today's gonna change because it's the perfect weather. It's like crisp, cold, yeah. slight breeze, not too much. It's the perfect weather where deer will move in. So if you don't see them today. Tomorrow morning. <laughs> well, we're gonna be goose hunting, but. Are we gonna be goose hunting? I think so. Yeah, we don't, we don't know yet. We'll find out today. Yeah, Mark's gonna let us know if we're going back out again or if he's gonna go deer hunting as well because we're kind of partying, partying it up a little bit. Mark's Back of my ear gun too. Concealed oh, carry. Yeah. He's gonna get a squirrel or two if he can. Five. <laughs> Add to the heap. Yep. So, all right, we'll see you after. Yep. All right, yeah, good, good luck. luck out there. Yep, good luck. All right, I'll see you guys over the shoe stand because you guys don't want to see me get over there, do you? Well, that was a pretty uneventful, eventful night. <laughs> we, uh, well, we saw some turkeys. I wasn't really expecting to see turkeys. I wasn't prepared to shoot turkeys because whatever, turkey. I don't know, maybe I'll get my button gear. I did, uh, I tried a headshot. Well, I tried two headshots on the turkeys. Uh, I obviously missed. <laughs> and then the third one, I'm like, oh, forget it. I'm just gonna do a mid body shot which is, you know, another kill shot on the turkey. And I hit the stupid branch. 
So now I got three dud broadheads. Well, they're not duddy. I picked them up and there's there's a lot of mud on them. So mud's not usually too, too bad on a broadhead, but I'm the kind of person that like, if I shoot a broadhead once and it goes in the dirt, I'm not gonna use it again. There are ways to pull them apart and sharpen them. I just don't never trust my sharpening job on a broadhead. There's something that could lead to you, you spending an awful lot of time looking for an animal in a giant forest. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna come up here, I wanna show you something. Cause on my way in, I found a huge scrape. And while we're waiting for me to get up there, I wanna to talk to you about what I saw on the trail camera. Lots of nighttime activity, unfortunately. Completely nocturnal, which is gonna make it really, really challenging to shoot a deer. Which I'm afraid is what's happening at a lot of the areas around here. It's only October 15th and they're not quite in full rut yet. So a lot of the activity is nocturnal. I mean, a lot of the activity period is nocturnal, but as we get close to the last week of October and into November, those deer started getting in rut, full rut. But uh, here's, a, here's a scrape, super, super fresh scrape I found on my way in. I don't know if you can tell, but all that dirt right here in the light has all been pawed back. And then there's an overhead licking branch here in the pine, but that's fresh with the last couple of days. So what the deer do is basically they paw the earth up and then they pee in it. And then that, that's kind of a scent card, smell card for all the rest of the animals. The does will come and step in it, pee in it. And uh, then you, the deer can kind of check out what's going on. Had a little uh, buck, I'm not sure how big, you'll see it right now on the trail camera. Uh, and the rest of the stuff, there's one little hint of daytime activity, but most of it's at night, so. But this kind of weather here, this windy and overcast, will get them moving. And also the food that's out there, they gotta pack on that weight for the winter. Hopefully Jeremy knocks something down. He tried the corn edge today and uh, he just did a little ground blind. He actually brought a goose with him so he could pluck it. <laughs> he likes to multitask. I told him, uh, I don't know if the feathers would help him or hinder him. Uh, maybe deer don't mind too much if there's like goose feathers flying all over the place. Maybe they do, but we'll find out. All right, see you at the cabin. I gotta figure out how the lights go. On, okay, good. Uh, fire's going good, Jeremy tended a little bit. I just popped it up, make sure it gets lots of oxygen. I'm gonna take my our raccoon uh, leftovers. You guys can see, maybe, maybe you can't see. Uh, it's just bones basically in the rice. I switched it over pot, so it's in the uh, small pot now. And um, a little bit of leftover. This is what it looks like. It looks like mash. So we'll throw that all in there in a second. But uh, I think we're gonna try to cook a fish. Uh, yeah, we are gonna cook a fish. Got some tins, I guess. I don't really have a better idea. Try to bake it or broil it. I think would be the best way to do it. And some uh, bear fat. Just slather the bear fat on the bottom and then just put the fish on top and just put it in the oven. That's my plan. I think that'll work. What do you guys think? I don't have a better one. I'll put wadobo on mine. Jeremy's gonna have to have his plane because he's not gonna eat the wadobo. It's against his rules. That's thought, the little goose you shot. A duck on a platter? <laughs> yeah, a little goose. <laughs> That's a pigeon? Yeah, a pigeon. Cool. So we could do a Are we eating goujin. It? Are we eating it tonight? Well, we're going to stuff it in the goose. Oh, so we're going to eat it tomorrow. Yeah. Because we're not going to eat goose tonight. No. Tonight's uh, rainbow trout. Okay. And leftover raccoons. Leftover raccoon bones. Okay. Not even raccoons. It's <laughs> raccoon. That's how we managed yeah. to Yeah. So there's a uh, heart, liver, and pigeon. Nice. And they pluck up really fast, especially compared to a goose. Yeah. And what did you see? Nothing. That's tracks here signs there's probably all the plucking you did uh yeah i got a goose plucked <laughs> while i was sitting there yeah. waiting for nothing to come out um i don't know i found some good raccoon trees though and i had a good look around so if we have time we should try and call there's like five or six likely trees within earshot of that collar okay so it'd be a good setup yeah good mm -hmm. visibility too you got some news about more yeah we're going on a goose hunt awesome yeah so mark confirmed uh, we're gonna go back to that spot. Okay. Same time, same place. Did you sit on the corn? Like, did you sit on the ground in the corn? 
I sat on the ground in the bush with my back to the corn and to a bit of a hay field. Okay. And I just kind of had 360 degrees of vision. Yeah. Just scuffed up a little ground blind. And yeah. Yeah. All right. It did work, but it was worth a try. That's the thing about deer. Every deer is different in every area. So a lot of people say, just put apples out, just put corn out. Like there's a field of corn and there's apple trees all over the place. Why would we do that? You can't compete against what's here naturally. There's literally like hundreds and hundreds of apple trees. Um, so it doesn't make any sense. In salt licks, people say, put a salt lick out. Like, why? It doesn't work. Yeah, they could just lick the road. <laughs> they literally, yeah. Well, we Jeremy's not lying. They could lick the road. <laughs> on, on Manitoulin Island, you see deer in the fields all the time, but you never see them here. Either. Never, never. Because no. here on the island, they have to eat grass all day long to get their food. Where here, a deer probably goes out, eats corn for 10 <laughs> minutes, soybeans for 10 minutes. It's so like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's gonna hide somewhere. And they're fat deer too. Like there's some yeah. big bucks. Yeah. There's some really well, big I'd, bucks. I have to show I'd my. I'd love to see one. My aunt, yeah, and so do I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to show off some of my big bucks at some point. Yeah. I got a big 13 point and a big giant trophy sized eight point. I know what's going on for deer. Just gotta put your time in. 20 yeah. hunts, you're gonna get two opportunities. Well, it's like not a great ratio, but hunts. I know that's the problem. <laughs> you just gotta keep going. Uh, this oven's off you turn it through from the high heat all the way down to the low heat all the way to the oven off pilots gas on and then there's a little pilot light back here and you just have to wait for the propane to run down there you just uh, crank it up and then this whole bar here is perforated with holes, so the propane runs into this bar uh, burner, I guess, and heats your oven up. It works real good. We had it going the other day for something. So I'm going to get the trout all cooked up. Uh, what I'm going to do is going to put a bunch of bear fat on the bottom just so it doesn't stick and then it'll make it nice and sizzly. And then we'll put the two trout down and put some more bear fat on the on the top of it. And then we'll just sprinkle some adobo on mine. I can't put any on Jeremy's because he's not going to eat it. He's refusing to. But maybe he'll get some of the odor seeping over. And I said explicitly if he gets any taste of the adobo, he has to spit it out or he's cheating on his big wild deer. So obviously Kevin made his way out here to see how we're doing. You guys know Kevin from the build series, not the catch and cook series, because he probably won't eat any of this. You eat a Doesn't fish? Look like it. I'll try a piece. <laughs> try something. You can eat first though, because you've been waiting to eat all day. Well, it's all about being patient. Here you go. The lava. Here we got. Set right there for a second. It's trout. You hear the jackery? Jackery's been powering us throughout the day here. That's just the wild rice. It's the wild rice in bear fat. Hmm? It's not soaked in yet, but right now we need to skim. Probably. I didn't scale it, which we went over. Mm -hmm. We tried to debate whether I should actually scale it, and I didn't want to get fishy hands again on a trout. When they're small ish, the scales are also smallish, so they're not going to bother you so much. Did you just eat the eyeball? Hmm? Oh man. <laughs> what part of it are you not going to eat? The bones and the tail. Yeah. Why don't you eat the eyeball? Uh, nope. nope. You're going to suck them right out? Nope, not eating the eyeball. What? The cheek? No, actually, the cheek's the best part. Cheek? Yeah, cod cheek is probably the best cheek. This is like a delicacy. I'm surprised you're offering the cheek. People are really low. Give people's reaction to it. Have you seen the eyeball before? I'm not eating that. I just saw him eat one. I thought mm. it was like a. No, I'm not eating that. <laughs> That's not the good part. No. It's all the stuff around it. Well, it's not really the, the eye you're eating. It's the, actually the brain, right? Mm. I mean, we. Well, the brain's in there too. That's the eye. Hmm. That's just the outside part. It's the, it's actually the brain. That's the best part. 
hidden all the inside here. Yeah. There, you fucked that up. Nope. Nope. Alright, whatever. <laughs> I do want to go back and get some more pigeons. I want to get some outside pigeons with my air gun. Okay. So pit stops everywhere. Yeah. Just crow, crow, Just crow, crow, pigeon. <laughs> duck. I don't know how you're going to get a duck. Duck, duck, goose. Duck's hard. Crow, crow, pigeon. Duck's going to be a challenge. Yeah. We don't have to go out of our way for them. No. But we'll make it one flying in. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, we're out. If you guys watch the whole video, right, full stop. And I'll see you in the next one.